out. Recording is starting now. It says recording on my end. Yeah. Okay. I just cool. didn't see the status. So, uh, hi everyone. Welcome uh, to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is April 7th. Um, as usual, we have a few topics in our agenda, including discussing recent news, and uh, we also have some topics here. And um, so let's just get started. So the first thing we have in the list is uh, the today's LCS release. Um, it's uh, uh, 2.277.2. Uh, Mark was um, the leader for this release. So Mark, would you like to summarize it? Sure, so it's a security release that uh, resolves uh, two, open, two open issues in security related to uh, let's see, valid data validation. Also, the security advisory had two plugins in it, and um, not a lot other than that. Uh, a few additional fixes related to things that had regressed in 2.277.1. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll also be having a live stream tomorrow where I'll be talking with Darren Pope about it more. Great, thank you. So we are basically just a few bug fixes and some of them will, uh, yeah, not that many things which will be backported. Right. And yeah, we have a few few proposed backports for the next release that will be discussed. We'll be looking for a different release leader next time so that we rotate that assignment. Right. Oh, and I haven't fixed the... I haven't fixed the uh, that those tags. Oh, like thank you for reminding me. I need to put that in the checklist. Yeah, I was just a bit surprised. Right, and that was my mistake. I should have fixed those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have some uh, reporting things on the table. I think urgent at the moment. Okay, and I guess that's it. So in two weeks we will be selecting the new LCS baseline. So at the next governance meeting, well, actually it will happen asynchronously in the mailing list, but I guess there will be interesting discussion. Okay, so the next one, Shikot South Africa. Okay, Mark? Yeah, so Shikot Africa is a group uh, organized in Africa to encourage women in Africa to participate in technology. Uh, and they have a, an ongoing event the month of April called the Contributhon. Uh, we've got five women from Africa who are being mentored by um, five different Jenkins developers. Uh, they're doing work on improving the examples and documentation related to pipeline in plugins. I saw some in the docs, some questions asked in the docs channel this week too. So, right, and and we're we're very grateful that they're. They're making progress, asking good questions. We've already seen the first pull request. Uh, we are also using a, a Slack channel now provided by CDF and the communication seem to be moving quite rapidly. So it looks good. We will Boo, meet. Slack. <laughs> we, we will oh. meet. They, they asked for it. We, we were trying to just help them to give them what they asked for. And okay. So, good. so we, we did a We'll do another mentoring session on Friday and then again one on Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot for running this program because it's great that we participate and it's also great that uh, we already have a few pull requests related uh, to pipeline documentation improvements. So looking forward to, to what we will get by the end of the um, assignment. Oh, sorry, by the end of the contribute on. Okay, anything else? That's it for me. So for JSOC, quick update. Uh, yeah, we have a student application phase open. We've already uh, got a number of uh, proposal drafts. I would guess around 10 or so. Um, the deadline for applications is uh, the next week. Uh, so hopefully we'll get more uh, proposals and then uh, the usual selection process will start. Uh, this year, we participate as a part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, me and Cara are work admins there, and it will be our responsibility to um, ensure that uh, we apply for the right number of uh, project slots and uh, uh, to also rank uh, uh, 
um, uh, Jenkins uh, related proposals. And this year they will be also uh, ranking of Jenkins proposals to versus uh, other project proposals. It's a terrain incognito for us, but I hope that we won't uh, experience any issues. So far in previous years, we were able to secure as many slots uh, as we asked for, more or less. And uh, Google is well aware that uh, the Jenkins project participates under the CDF umbrella this year. So hopefully we will get uh, a lot of slots, not just uh, two slots, which new organizations usually get. Uh, I think we should, uh, I know we've been doing it, but we should blast out social media again for DSOC because we have a communication issue where no one knows where to find information, especially attracting new contributors is better to over expose them to information than worry about just mailing this or just a uh, Gitter channel or just something. Yeah, uh, so how it happens, uh, we definitely expect all students to do some uh, communications as a part of community bonding and the first coding phase, so introducing their projects. Also, during uh, the community bonding, we expect all uh, project teams to uh, establish communication channels, uh, to uh, figure out all the permissions, all the infrastructure requirements. Today, we had a classic question about getting uh, access to public clouds. Uh, so, yeah, all of that uh, will be resolved in May. I meant more uh, sending out like a LinkedIn post reminding people that we are or have openings for GSOC, not so much the GSOC students themselves. All oh, right. Mm, yeah, mm, makes sense. So, over the past years, we used to send uh, these uh, notices quite regularly. Uh, this year, it's again a kind of a brand white issue. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. It should be doing that. The, uh, I mean, not quite related, but the, I think we were all surprised how. Uh, how uh, useful or how how much feedback we got back when we posted about the events officer. I don't know if anything necessarily came about it, but we got a lot more people talking about it than we thought would, you know, in LinkedIn. So it's probably better to, uh, again, post to LinkedIn because that's where a lot of students are spending their time, so. Yeah. yeah that's right. Uh... We will definitely do that. Also, we did uh, Jenkins Online Meetup last week, uh, one week before we did uh, Code for Course Meetup with uh, more than 2,000 interviews and more than 150 live participants. And there was at least uh, one follow up with a student uh, from this meetup. So well, let's see how it goes. Yeah. and. We will definitely push some announcements. Uh, I guess tomorrow we will have a sync up with Kara to see uh, who does what. Uh, but we are doing last uh, minute marketing push anyway. You may have seen uh, these tweets about student and mentor experiences. So if you go here, you can find uh, that uh, we had, for example, uh, tweet from uh, Mar is Mark's recording, also um, uh, student recording videos. And yeah, if anyone wants to share their experiences, uh, JSOC or not, please do so. So just a short video, like 30 seconds, or one minute, and we will be happy to post it. Do we have a page or blog post or something with all these on it, or is it just on Twitter? Uh, I have an action item for myself. Um, I just didn't do that. Okay. But yeah, I have an action item. We have uh, some of these um, testimonials included in the Jenkins uh, uh, call for applications, uh, this one. So the post uh, posted by Cara in April. So by this time we had uh, four testimonials and you can find them here, but now we have more. Yeah. So, so it yeah. may be worth uh, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I have this uh, Google Doc, I can share it. Uh, so they, I basically aggregate all JSOC related feedback we've got from previous years. So in form of uh, videos, uh, text messages, also travel reports we had before like Jenkins blog posts, etc. 
and feedback from mentors. Which is a good reminder that I should also record my video. And Gavin, if you want to record something about contributing uh, to Jenkins, yeah, please do so. Same for others on the call. We'll, we'll see. Okay. So, anything else about JSOC? Okay. So the next quick update is about event officer uh, call for participation. So I posted announcement in Twitter and LinkedIn. We've got uh, several follow-ups um, and I'm currently processing them. So most likely next week we will have an onboarding meeting. Um, I have uh, six contributor leads um, and yeah, let's see uh, how it goes. Okay, hopefully we will be able to increase our bandwidth and we have upcoming events uh, where it could be useful. Okay. Anything else? Other than, you know, in the way that marketing and everything else works in LinkedIn, we should probably post again multiple times before we call it closed. Uh, you mean uh, posting multiple times in LinkedIn? Yeah, I, I wouldn't bother with Twitter. I don't even know if anyone replied it on Twitter, but uh, the kind of thing you do in LinkedIn is, you know, once every two weeks or three weeks, you post job postings again until you've filled up the slot. So I'm not saying we should do that, but it may be worth doing. Uh, might be though in LinkedIn, it's a bit better in Twitter because in Twitter, uh, yeah, well, even with the current uh, automated, uh, uh, thing which somehow shows you tweets in whatever order it defines. Yeah. Uh, tweets basically get lost after several days. In the case of LinkedIn, it's a bit better because these posts uh, keep appearing uh, because of preferences, etc. So after you post something, you usually get uh, traction for one month or so. Yeah. Okay. So maybe another month. Although I will say that uh, it's very hard to get the view a post for a specific quote company you have to like mm -hmm. click 18 times to get to the right section the main feed is like twitter though it just randomly shows you whatever it feels like showing you so right well that's right so what we could do we could basically post more quality content and increase number of followers yeah so when i started maintaining the linkedin um, in april so one year ago, we had uh, 3,000 followers. Now we have 52,000 yeah. uh, more than in Twitter. And yeah, actually the impression numbers are quite good, especially when we talk about technical content. For example, yeah. Yeah, here's a recent blog post uh, from which basically reposted video from uh, uh, Darren Pope about GitLab multi-branch. So, well, it's okay. If you scroll down, yeah, you can see that uh, other events, yeah, security blog posts, also event organizers. Uh, the uh, board one gets a lot because I get tagged in it. This one? Yeah. Yes. You got a lot. Yeah, so we can access this data. Basically, all LinkedIn uh, admins can access that. And if you want to be a LinkedIn admin, just let me know. Well, it kind of works. Definitely it doesn't hurt to have uh, applications there. They don't require much time. Yeah. And ideally we should uh, scale this approach to use the same publication method for Facebook and for Reddit. Yeah. Uh, maybe for something else, but yeah, we have talked about it multiple times. We haven't uh, automated it yet. Yeah, the, the problem with automating it is it, it'll actually probably reduce the, um, impressions right uh, so that's why i mentioned uh, linkedin facebook and uh, uh, reddit because uh, all of them have more or less similar layout and taking format yeah so it can work but you cannot uh, do the same for twitter and linkedin yeah so you can post something like that it's basically like in twitter 
uh, but if we talk about other things, so sometimes there are extended descriptions, which helps with search with visibility and also uh, it helps uh, basically post content uh, directly in LinkedIn. So you don't uh, have to click through to get basic information. Yeah. Well, well like I like said, that. I am still working on a POC to post blog posts to uh, Get the Gitter chat room. So once that's done, there's no reason we couldn't make it do it to other services as well. But it's not a yeah. priority for me. So, yeah, right. Uh, also, there are GitHub actions for that if you, you want to have whatever social media is called. Um, well, we can do the same in Jenkins if somebody wants to hack. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, basically, it's work in progress. Okay, moving on. So the next uh, is for hosting team. So Alex Earl sent an announcement that he would be stepping down uh, due to the lack of time. So first of all, thanks to Alex Earl for all the contributions because yeah, he has been leading a hosting process for the last three or four years. And he, he has helped to host maybe three or 400 plugins. And also um, a lot of uh, automation around that, thanks to Alex team. Uh, so yeah, it's much appreciated. And right now we have a question on what we actually do, because well, last year we tried to form the hosting team. There were multiple contributors who joined, uh, but at the same time, Alex was de facto handling the most of the requests. So. Uh, I also help to help uh, to handle some requests uh, featured by water helps, uh, but definitely without Alex, uh, this process uh, needs more manpower uh, to handle that because it's quite tedious. It also requires expertise in the Jenkins ecosystem so that you can suggest duplicates, uh, establish connections between plugin maintainers when reasonable. Um, and we definitely need to onboard uh, more contributors to this process. Do you have an idea how much time it takes per week to work on that? Uh, well, we have uh, pretty much full automation. So what we do not have automation for um, are the reviews. Because uh, what usually, yes. There happens, there's, there's probably an average of one to two new plugin requests a week. Um, and then mm -hmm. Alex runs it through the automated checker, which checks all the meta, the actual code stuff. Then he does a code review. So that one will take some time depending on the size of the plugin. And then, uh, you know, going through the actual, uh, cycles through that. So I'm thinking probably about three hours a week. And what can, when, and what kind of skills would you need to, to contribute on that? Except honestly, just reading PRs. Honestly, Google. Just, you know, take a look at, see what other plugins exist. Like, so I've been helping out randomly. I don't help very often. But, you know, uh, when a new plugin request comes in, you, you run the checker bot, which is just one command. It's easy to run. That does a lot of the work. Then you do the, the code review. So the code review would be the only thing that actually requires any skill. And uh, when we... We point that out on RC. It's it's you don't have to do the code reviews. It's a nice thing to do. It's nice to say, hey, this will probably cause a security thing, so you might want to look into it. But if they don't do it, it's not the end of the world, right? So, and then on top of that, it's just as Oleg says, it's uh, looking at existing plugins and seeing like, do you want to extend this existing one? Do you want to merge with them? Do you want to work with them? Most of the non-automated stuff is just nice to have useful things. I mean, we could essentially just run the bot and prove everything that passes the bot. It probably wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah, right. Uh, well, uh, there are some uh, things to keep in mind. So firstly, it's communication uh, with maintainers when something goes wrong. Yeah. Because when something is okay, it's pretty straightforward. But sometimes you need to spend time uh, referencing documentation, uh, sometimes hand-holding. For example, here, yeah, I opened the link. It's not accessible. Uh, so I'm just uh, going uh, to try that. So for the majority of the cases, a brand new, like a Hacktoberfest or any sort of random person could come in, do the initial screening, you know, take a look at the code, see if it's body anything. 
and then someone with more experience could come in and answer any questions the reviewer has. Like it could be done mm -hmm. that way and shave. I mean, Tim, Tim Jacobs, myself, and Alex Earl do hang out on the IRC channel and answer a bunch of questions. We just don't have very many other people reviewing. All right. Uh, so by anyone so, else, I mean, Alex does everything. Yeah, good news that um, some uh, requests can be reviewed by the security team. Uh, for example, yeah, when we host, we usually check uh, for uh, worst practices in terms of how you screw up Jenkins security, like uh, permission checks, missing uh, required posts, etc. Um, Make sure you use and, credentials instead of saving. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, yeah. all these best practices, uh, Daniel has started CodeQL to automate some of them. And hopefully we'll get this uh, process in place as we discussed at the contributor summit. Uh, but yeah, it's not fully completed by now. Um, also, um, yeah, uh, what's not automated is uh, the duplication because often we get uh, hosting requests for functionality which is already available. Sometimes we get conflicting uh, plugin hosting requests ha happening at the same time or not plugin. So, so for example, recently we had uh, such a, key, a case for Golang based CLIs. We've got two hosting requests which basically duplicate each other, more or less, just different projects. And yeah, all of that requires special handling. So do you want me to draft up another LinkedIn post to get more people? Because so far we got one. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm trying yeah. not to give Oleg more action items, but I think it should be. No, I don't. Well, uh, I used to run uh, the hosting process before Alex took it over. Uh, Sorry. But uh, yeah, I do not uh, want to commit on that right now. I meant more, uh, I'm trying not to throw out ideas that I'm not willing to do myself. So I think as what I meant to say is I think we should uh, broadcast a little broader yeah. about getting more people involved. So I will draft up a, a notice for LinkedIn and, and yeah. Twitter. And we can, can I, uh, together help with uh, contribute from voting. So basically some training, scoring, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, and put the documentation in place so the next person who is interested to contribute to that can improve the documentation as well. Uh, yeah, I spent some time on that during the previous iteration. So when we were introducing uh, the hosting team one year ago, so here, if you go to hosting, uh, there is description of the team, there is description of how to contribute uh, and the other things. Obviously it doesn't cover everything, but uh, it's a starting point. And uh, everybody is welcome to just submit the pull request and extend it. Yeah, do you wanna add the link to that to the doc as well? Sure. Yeah, we actually wanted uh, to have uh, uh, all the teams. Uh, so when I was working on that, uh, I basically just added some teams which we had in place. So security and transaction hosting. I definitely want to put the release team uh, here. Uh, but yeah, we have so many teams which are not that official. So yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll probably add them here, at least as stakeholders. What's the difference between a team and a SIG? Um, that's a good question. Uh, so team uh, as entity was introduced when we introduced officers. So if you use uh, the Jenkins website terminology, we have uh, team leads, uh, even in hyperlink, uh, because it ha it's how it was on Wiki. Um, but basically it's officers. So we, nominally from that, we get five teams, security, infrastructure, events, release, documentation, in theory. In practice, it's not the case. And uh, many sub projects uh, and the SIGs could be also considered as teams or as working groups. Though, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mentioned a few times so that I would like to start in line that maybe just merging six and sub projects to working groups or something like that. I don't have strong opinion as long as uh, teams operate. Uh, but yeah, for me, teams is mostly uh, basically groups of contributors who work on uh, uh, 
basically maintenance tasks, which are first mission critical to the project, and secondly, time sensitive. Because you can drop the ball on release, on infrastructure, and security. Well, you can, but not for long. Um, and for me, teams uh, make really sense uh, in these areas because they, it, we can use teams to share the workload. Yeah. So, for example, I'm not sure whether uh, there is a point in having a formal documentation team. Uh, it makes sense to have documentation seek or working group, uh, but definitely not. Or maybe copy editors team on Jenkins IO, which is probably a team, but definitely not just a documentation team. Well. I hope you had enough contributors uh, for it to be really a problem. <laughs> but yeah, mm, if you see any improvements in the documentation, just feel free to submit a pull request. Okay, anything else? Uh, do you want to add an action item for me to write up a social media call? Yeah. Yeah, you can probably copy paste uh, some of materials from this page, etc. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, if you do that, it would be much appreciated. Okay. Then next uh, thing, CLA process updates. And so actually you can see the last updates um, in the mailing list. So yeah, I contacted uh, the Linux Foundation. So the Linux Foundation doesn't have strong opinion whether we should use uh, DCO or CLA and how we use that. So taking the feedback, uh, I suggest that we start from basically porting the current Jenkins approach to easy CLA. And then we talk uh, about the legal stuff. So I submitted uh, the request to the Linux Foundation uh, in order to get um, easy CLA in place. I sent another message today just to remind about the, that. And I have a thread with maybe 10 uh, people from Linux Foundation to get it uh, in place. So hopefully we'll get it um, established. And tomorrow, if you're interested, there is a easy CLA webinar something like 4 p.m. UTC or 5 p.m. UTC. Um, so if you're interested, you can join. So if I'm lucky and if I get access today, I will set up it and then by tomorrow I will have some feedback. But it's a optimistic scenario. Okay. No other updates? Moving on. Okay, Jenkins Contributor Summit. So the first update that uh, we have it confirmed, uh, we confirmed it today, June 25th. We confirmed uh, how it will be announced uh, with uh, this continuous delivery foundation. Um, and there is a coordination doc. So this coordination doc uh, is basically more or less empty at the moment. So what you can do, you can make suggestions about key topics you would like to discuss, for example, I put some white ideas like Jenkins 3, Java 11, 17 support, Jenkins and Jenkins X collaboration, etc. So if you want to put something like that, just uh, make a suggestion in the developer list in this document. We still have two months uh, to figure out everything. Um, but yeah, I think that it would be nice to start pre-planning the things. And then, then, well, basically that's it. So there is a lot of things to figure out, like how do we use Schwab, uh, et cetera, but uh, the conference should be announced soon. And there is also, uh, also uh, that's why I don't want to, like to do it on my personal laptop. So if you go to the Contributor Summit page, yesterday I submitted a pull request, which just it's a very basic landing. So it's not fancy at all. Uh, any UI UX designers is welcome to reward that. Um, but yeah, it just puts some more basic information, a big uh, red registration button. So this registration button, 
put to silicon because we agreed with uh, CDF that uh, we will use their registration form. So once it's ready, Jenkins will be one of the options. So you will be basically registering through Linux Foundation system. And well, yeah, Jenkins Contributor Summit will be also listed here once everything is in place. Same uh, as for Linux Foundation events. So they have these sites for all official events. And the yeah, Jenkins Contributor Summit will be also considered as official uh, Linux Foundation event. And it costs us zero dollars. So 15,000 uh, less than it costed uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, uh, speaking of the costs, uh, you can see that some uh, events um, have pages on eventslinuxfoundation.org. So if you want, we can get to the same page for 1500. So, well, we can afford it. And I don't see a particular need to do that, but if somebody has a strong opinion, then we can uh, get it posted. I mean, we never, I mean, we never really use that, so I'm not sure that we have to pay for that. Yeah. So, well, except uh, fancy website and uh, not the fancy content management project process, if you want uh, something to change. Um, well, basically, it just gets your landing on uh, events Linux Foundation Talk. I'm not sure we really need that. If you want uh, this layout, I think we can create it on Jinx IO easily if needed. I think one of the questions that we always hesitated in the past is if the Jenkins Contributor Summit was targeting Jenkins users or contributor, and then because sometimes we try to not promote too much the event, and so. Well, if you take a look at the, um, the Linux uh, Foundation events, there are some contributor only events. Uh, there are some events focused on users. In the case of Jenkins, we can also have two types of events. Right now, we are not uh, really limited with promotion because before, when you're doing it uh, during Jenkins Vault, uh, if you do too much promotion, you can get uh, 1,000 people coming to the event, which is probably a bit too much. But for online event, uh, we uh, can host uh, up to 500 participants if needed. It's definitely more than enough. And, and uh, depending on how many registrations we get, we can scale. So I wouldn't be too concerned. Uh, but yeah, so again, uh, the agenda is subject for the discussion. I, when I was uh, proposing this event, I was rather thinking about contributor summit, though having some sessions with user feedback um, would be nice. So for example, inviting several key users to do a talk about what they would like to see in Jenkins uh, or something like that. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it about, about it as a user event. And we also have um, six or seven uh, Jenkins related talks uh, during the CDCon. So probably it's enough. Does it answer your comment, uh, Olivia? Yeah. If you have any ideas, just uh, drop them in this talk or in the mailing list. You have plenty of time to adjust. Okay. So should we move on then? So yeah, Contributor Summit, I hope we will have it announced this week. Uh, really, the ball is on the CDF site right now because we prepared uh, everything on our site. We just need uh, them to post uh, the event and then we will start promotion. And as you have seen, uh, other events like Spinnaker Summit, GitOps Summit, etc., are being promoted already. So, okay. So then I have uh, a few topics which I haven't submitted to the mailing list. So, right now, definitely no decision but maybe some initial discussion. 
So one is about Jenkins Treasury. So our current state that we have more than 10K on the SPI account. It includes um, uh, GSOC budget. It includes a uh, general purpose Jenkins budget, uh, approximately 50-50. And we have uh, more than 3,000 on the Linux Foundation crowdfunding, LFX crowdfunding. So my question is whether we want to do something about that or whether we just want to keep uh, the current uh, money on the SPA account until we spend them. Well, my understanding, for... yeah, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Mm -hmm. So for we can still actually request reimbursement for something from SPI, even though they no yep. longer hold the copyright for Jenkins? Uh, yes, SPI confirmed that they would be processing uh, hosting requests, um, but yeah, Jenkins is no longer a project of SPI. Uh, the SPI government board uh, met, I believe in February, if I recall correctly, they actually voted on excluding Jenkins which is totally fine and uh, taking our transition status. And well, they help a lot and they keep helping when needed. So we can uh, keep our treasury there for a while, uh, but yeah, so we are not pressed to leave, but at the same time, yeah, it might be better from the operation standpoint. So for SPI, the main problem is a quite tedious process in terms of uh, handling because SPI is driven by volunteers and sometimes it takes one to two months to deliver the payment. And we hit this issue a few times when we are processing payments for JSOC students. And for JSOC, at some point, our recommendation was that it's better that if a mentor pays and then we reimburse the mentor uh, but yeah, uh, otherwise it works pretty fine. And for Linux Foundation crowdfunding, it also works pretty fine. So we still need to add other governance board members to the expensify backend because uh, the uh, yeah, Linux Foundation crowdfunding it has a front end uh, which you can show. Uh, but yeah, the expense report handling is a bit uh, complicated there. So just a second. Yeah, so if you go to the meet, yeah, there is a, I need to finally fix that. Okay, so, and we also need to fix that because it's no longer community page, it's LFX crowdfunding. But after that, if you finally get there, you can see that there is a Jenkins budget with some things. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, basically that's it. So yeah, you can uh, donate uh, the things there. You can uh, manage some things there. And uh, when you manage expenses, it's Expensify. Um, and there basically on the month we can add uh, beneficiaries. And then this beneficiaries uh, can uh, submit expense report using standard Expensify tools, including uh, uh, basically phone applications that they want. And then uh, Linux Foundation accounting team handles the payments. Uh, we cannot uh, use them for paying salaries or whatever, but we can use it for paying stipends and uh, reimbursing uh, contributors for whatever it needs, including stickers, infrastructure costs, domain costs, whatever, whatever. Do you have a list of... Do you have a list of things that we can use uh, that you can that we where we usually spend money? Um, so, for instance, from an infrastructure point of view, I know that we've been using the SPI to pay the SendGrid account, but it's only fifteen dollars per month. Uh, but obviously, if we want to to use that money to pay the Azure account, then everything will be gone in one one month. Well, so, yeah, if we talk about Azure account, it's a completely different story. Yeah. Right now, we are not ready to that. I mean, thanks to the Continuous Delivery Foundation for sponsoring. Um, but uh, yeah, if we really need to pay a tens a thousand per month, then we will need to really work on crowdfunding. But, uh, but that, that, that's why I'm, I'm mentioning that maybe we could have a list uh, about the, how we use that money. Yeah, there is a list. Okay. Yeah. I reworked it uh, last year when uh, I was setting it up because before that uh, nice. we had all the documentation which was in conflict with how we 
you use to actually spend money. So it's facilitating whatever key initiatives, including outreach programs, SHPAC, et cetera, operating on infrastructure expenses, uh, organizing meetups, uh, gets for reporting security vulnerabilities, funding travel grants. And yeah, basically it's uh, what we had historically. So if you see anything missing there, uh, please feel free to suggest a change. But yeah, when we were reviewing that, uh, this list will seem to be covering uh, all uh, the actual needs. So, yeah, I know that's not the right season for that, but personally, I would prefer to, to sponsor maybe some GSAC student if they want to travel to, to talk about Jenkins or whatever. Yeah, uh, so for that, uh, we have a uh, JSOC budget. So there is JEP, which is not mentioned, he's uh, JEP 8, which specifically uh, covers uh, how we spend the JSOC budgeting. And uh, the agreement in this JEP that basically all JSOC money remain uh, uh, designated for JSOC. And historically, we have spent this money for travel grants. So for example, in 2019, we were able to sponsor uh, for students uh, to travel to Jenkins World, to DevOps World. And uh, yeah, so obviously last year we didn't sponsor any student because there was no travel, but we still keep this money and uh, this uh, potential that we sponsor them in the coming years when the situation normalizes. Do we want I mean, not JSOC directly, but do we want to sponsor any other open source stuff that we use? So, um, mm. the Outreach the pro program? The what? Outreach. Uh, uh, I was, so, I mean, I, I no. sponsor a bunch of the JavaScript build tools and JavaScript libraries that I use personally quite a bit. And I was just thinking that Jenkins uses a few JavaScript ones, but a lot of uh, Java ones, and it might be worth. Like if someone was donating to Jenkins, I don't know if they would necessarily donate to things that Jenkins uses. Yeah, I would agree with that. And if you wanted, uh, I would rather suggest a different approach because we can definitely highlight opportunities for donation. And we can help, uh, for example, by uh, submitting contributions to upstream, etc. I wouldn't uh, spend uh, Jenkins budget uh, on sponsoring other projects. Okay. unless uh, there is a justified need for the Jenkins project. So for example, if you want to improve, let's say maybe a release plugin to help uh, Jenkins releases, it's yeah. definitely something we can sponsor from the Jenkins project. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Right now, I basically brought up this question just to get feedback from somebody. Uh, so if nobody sees any strict need to move out from SPA, then no urgency. I just have confirmation from the Linux Foundation that we can uh, uh, move uh, the funds without additional fee uh, from the Linux Foundation. Um, but yeah, um, there is no emergency need to do the transition. Okay. Anything else on budgeting and other things? No, I think uh, a reminder for me that we actually need to publish the budget report for the previous year. We ex actually expected to publish uh, the budget report every six months as the governance board, if I recall correctly. It was written somewhere in the governance doc, uh, but yeah, I don't think that the, the, it was a case before. Yeah, you also the reminder for myself that was, that was going through these budget things anyway. Okay. More fun topic. So actually we missed the event. So in February, it was 10 years since Hudson renewing to Jenkins. 
So yeah, we missed that, but maybe we still want to somehow do some marketing related stuff around this event. So for example, just having a blog post with some testimonials from founding fathers like Kiki, Talia, Andrew Bayer, uh, maybe somebody else. Uh, and yeah, we, if you have other ideas in mind, we can definitely do that. Maybe also a special sticker. Though, yeah, I'm not sure whether we have been white to do that. And personally, I would find it weird since we promote a lot of 15 years of Jenkins not so long ago. So I would find it weird to not talk about the 10 years of Jenkins. Well, even the 15 years was a bit weird because we promote, so the 15 years promotion happened on the CDF but not on Jenkins due to reasons I can fully comprehend except the lack of open white on the community side. Mm, so I would definitely do some promotion. So yeah, blog post, well, I guess it's something we can definitely do. It's not like we have too many blog posts every day on Jenkins IO. Um, so regarding stickers uh, and well, uh, schwack for contributors and whatever, yeah, I'm not sure. Because it's basically production and logistics costs on that. Olivier and... wants keycaps, remember that. Sorry? Olivier wants keycaps. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we know how to spend the money. Yeah. To send them from Canada to, to Europe. Yeah. And then I also know who are the people that have mechanical keyboards. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it's um, not the worst idea. I mean, well, it's definitely a good thing to do. Uh, also, some people start running out of t shirts, I guess. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> And so yeah, the main problem for us is production because currently uh, the official way we can use is to contact Pinnacle. It's vendor of the Linux Foundation and to get work on the Linux Foundation store. Uh, for example, with contributor bundles like we did for JSOC, UIUX, Hackfest last year. Uh, but uh, yeah, from what we discovered, uh, delivering work from there costs a leg. And yeah, right now I'm trying to figure it out because uh, there are other requests for Schwak, including she codes Africa, um, JSOC, JSOC applicants. And um, yeah, right now I don't have answer. And if somebody knows a friendly company which would deliver uh, these things and produce uh, uh, Schwak bundles, like stickers, uh, t-shirts, etc., we could definitely talk to them. Yeah, for example, Daniel Beck currently uses Redbubble uh, for security gifts. Um, yeah, all of the things are quite expensive, actually. I think DigitalOcean uses that same one Jenkins uses, so I don't have anything. Yeah, so, well, Jenkins currently uses only Pinnacle. I just couldn't remember that. I know you just said it, but I couldn't remember the name. So, yeah. I mean, it's a relatively small company, but uh, yeah, they serve the entire Linux Foundation. So, I guess all of us on the call got um, a few boxes from them over the past year. Well, the boxes are really cool, but yeah, the delivery cost is not cool. So, yeah. And we, we don't really need FedEx, I guess. I think in general, shipping international is expensive. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, I can just share some numbers. So for example, if I want to send 250 grams from Switzerland to the United States or to India, it costs nine francs. Oh, well, nine dollars, basically. And if I want to do this same with Pinnacle, it, uh, t- it costs eight times more. So, yeah, we need to figure out uh, these numbers. 
Um, but yeah, right now, yeah, I would rather send it from Switzerland. So yeah, when we had a list of 2019, Martin Danjou uh, did a heroic effort, uh, sending everything from uh, from Canada uh, and uh, to others. Uh, but yeah, it's it's totally possible. It's just a huge time investment to do if you do it without uh, the logistics system. I, I think a lot of people start paying attention also to their carbon their carbon footprint, and I think it would be cool if we could brag about you know caring uh, for the environment and 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 not like sending stuff to the other side of the world, okay. but maybe spending time on on finding a local vendor that can I don't know print stickers in India or something like or that. Or we can maybe. send PDFs and whatever NFC tokens, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand it's, it's probably uh, uh, troublesome, but I, I personally get very irritated when Efficode sends, uh, sends us something that I didn't ask for. And I definitely agree with you, but for the challenge there is it depends if you have a local event, um, then you can, org I mean, then you can prepare everything locally and that's fine. That's what I've been doing for for instance, for FOSDEM, I print everything in Belgium. And uh, I mean, most of the things are, are, are produced in Belgium. But when you have like events where people can contribute from everywhere in the world, that's quite challenging to have uh, local um, uh, vendors. I, I, I understand it's not always possible, but... Uh... Uh, if we if we if we can manage to step it like a bit like one step further, that's yeah. also something that's uh, that's uh, you know. Uh, maybe uh, maybe have a list of vendor per continent or per countries or something like that. So. Yeah. I think we should do like Hacktoberfest and just offer to not send swag. Be like, hey, you know, you want to recognize your contribution? You want to plant a tree instead? You know. Yeah. And then uh, Jenkins contributor will plant them three and set a we'll send a photo to, to Twitter. Yeah. And then we'll we'll plant the plant trees in the shape of the butler too. Okay. Well, actually, it makes sense. Though, well, Schwack also makes sense to some extent. Um, but yeah, I don't think that we can go completely virtual. Oh, uh, uh, things. I did. I sent it in the chat, but I I saw it in uh, uh, it's one of the one of the ones I learned about recently is ecology.com. Um, so essentially, it'll let you uh, gift uh, with an I. So ecology. Yeah. So essentially, you can gift trees to people. So you can set it up, and I think they have an API as well. So this would be another option too. Oh yeah. Uh, there is actually uh, the same uh, program uh, on. So basically, when you participate in October first, there is also a vendor, and they yeah. you could actually uh, plant the trees. I would so likely. I, I think it's them. Um, so one of so DigitalOcean runs Hacktoberfest, and one of the mm -hmm. DigitalOcean customers wrote a tool that you can log in with your DigitalOcean account and it'll look at all the servers you're running and then uh, click you click a button and you donate that many trees to counteract the number of servers you're running. Yeah. So that's how I heard about this. Yeah, I have to admit that I actually ordered a t-shirt uh, from uh, October first, but at the same time, I found it to 20 trees. Yeah. Later, so, wow. I guess yeah, and, and like a physical swag is it it means a lot to 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 many people, and there are still some things mm -hmm. that I like. So I I'm not saying like you know, let's let's yeah. let's uh, Bo -bo go yeah. trees only or something like that. But I think those are nice ideas, and 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 depending on the uh, event or, or 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 what's the occasion, we can probably come up with 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 some some solution that uh, would appeal mm -hmm. to most. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely in favor of that because I mean, when you look at the actor buffet, a lot of people choose to, the tree option. Mm. So that was quite popular. So I would definitely prefer that, that option as well. I agree. And, and if we can do a group buy, we could be like Jenkins tree plants 10,000 trees. So next face to face contributor summit will be quite busy, right? Planting trees? Yeah. Yeah. We'll all bring a spade and start planting them one at a time. 
No. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather do it with drones, though, because I think they're more fun. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's a good idea uh, to consider. And we, again, uh, we could partner with whatever organization like uh, ecology or something like that and to see how we could promote it because it could be a more or less permanent uh, call to action. Why not? Yeah. So, yeah. Anything else on uh, yeah, what we were discussing actually? Yeah, celebrating 10 years. I yeah, somehow I, ended up with planting trees. <laughs> Well, we're, we're talking about uh, producing swag for that event. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, right. Um, so for this particular event, I don't think we have enough time to produce work. Uh, so well, we can uh, just uh, do a blog post layer for now. Um, yeah, if you have some bandwidth later, let's see how we could, uh, what we could do. But I think that's a good idea to, to have a little swag that we can produce for future events. So yeah, that's right. So basically what I asked CDF for is having a swag box. Uh, basically you can choose uh, either Jenkins socks or Jenkins t-shirt, one of uh, options, sizes, etc., And also a pack of uh, Jenkins and CDF stickers. So the cost of uh, the box itself is totally reasonable. I mean, well, without really a uh, box, uh, but uh, having a package. So we can do it for $15 or so, um, or maybe 20. Uh, the re the problem, real problem right now is delivery cost because uh, $20 uh, for Schwag kit is totally fine. Uh, but yeah, 100 for Schwag box and delivery doesn't seem to be so fine. What about for 100 or for the 10 year thing, we do something different and we, I know it's weird to spend the money like that, but like um, name a star or something like that, name a star Jenkins CI or something, you know, as a big milestone. Name a star? Yeah, there's there's programs out there that you know when they discover a new sun or whatever, you can you can name a star out there and register it. And it's really just a name on a paper, but it you know it's kind of something that's different and you know unique, and you could throw it up there as a you know you know to celebrate ten years, we donated to this or we named this or you know. Yeah. Because I, I, I mean, as regular contributors to Jenkins and everything else, there's a lot of swag that comes their way. Like I, I got a bunch when I was at Jenkins World. I got a bunch when I went to conferences at work. I don't think any of the people on this call are probably the ones that are lacking in swag. Um, I think the people who are lacking in swag are the new contributors. But I'm not sure the 10 year mark is a good idea to get uh, swag to new contributors. I think it's a good way to bring in new contributors. And so doing something unique and different would be a way to bring in new contributors because people will talk about it. Right. Mm, so yeah, uh, regarding stars, yeah, you missed the first April because we could uh, buy some property on the moon and yeah. announce moving Jenkins servers there. Olivia we put, would be quite busy with it. We could put IPFS up there and just uh, everyone can archive their artifacts to the moon. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, some idea for the next year. Okay. So yeah, let's keep discussing that. So I'm working on this Schwag kids. Uh, we have multiple programs. So it's not only Shakos Africa. We had some contributors who contributed to Jenkins pen testing and report issues. We also have a few other programs to keep in mind, including. I forgot which ones, uh, but yeah, once we have a Schwag kit on uh, the CDF store or elsewhere, it becomes quite automatic. So I don't want to handle logistics for all of that. I'm, I'm realizing it, how late it is for you all because the three of you are yawning like mad. It's making me want to yawn. Okay. I don't know what time that. zone Chris is in. He hasn't started yawning yet. 
Okay. So speaking of that, uh, what do we do with meeting times? Because yeah, 8 p.m. UTC seemed to fine uh, when uh, it was uh, 9 p.m. in Europe. Now it's 10 p.m. in Europe. I'm good moving so, in an hour early if you want. That would be nice earlier. Certainly great for me. Adelina, Olivier, Chris, any objections to you to moving it one hour earlier? No, I would no, definitely no. prefer oh, Uli as well. <laughs> I could do as far as two hours. I couldn't do any earlier than that. But two hours is fine for me as well. Yeah, I, I think Uli's, our purpose in moving it to, to only to the current time was so that Uli could have a chance to put kids to bed yep. and, mm -hmm. and still be able to attend the meeting after kids were in bed. So for me, moving two hours earlier risks that we'll, we'll be right into his kids' bedtime. No, I, I so, agree. I, that's that's just my window. This is my perfect I, I window. Was, I was in the same situation. Uh, nine nine a.m. and nine p.m. for me is easier because I'm sure that the kids are sleeping. Right. Okay. So let's start at nine p.m. Then. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's okay. it's that's noon for me, so it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, so we still have an open question of whether we want to adjust the meeting schedule if we want to have some meetings in uh, Asian and Pacific time zone. Um, but yeah, right now there was no interested contributors. So Rick, I guess, would start joining if we had meetings in this time zone. Um, but yeah, For the governance, uh, governance one or just meetings in general? Uh, governance, we have. Uh, a few meetings in the uh, APAC time zone already, like JCASC um, and well, Chinese localization seat. I know I can't do European mornings. It's it's like 3 a.m. for me. Yeah. But that's... Australian I can do, but not European. So Yeah. Well, we still need to do the most of this type of synchron asynchronously. Yeah. So these meetings should be rather just rubber stamping whatever decisions and maybe having some discussions. So, well, it's great to have a long discussion like today's one about one increase, etc. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's why we could uh, have uh, such sessions in the morning as well, well, in my morning sometimes, so that uh, other contributors also get involved. But it's strictly speaking not about governance. So, yeah, I think we agreed about the meeting times. Anything else for today? No, I want to pick Mark and Olivier's brain briefly afterwards, but I'm good. Okay. So, like, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and. Mm -hmm.